Men measure a woman and woman's attractiveness by her obesity. Literally, a plus size woman is highly valued. Hello and welcome to BB Zone. In today's video, we're gonna feature the Banyankole. Let's delve into the intriguing world of Banyankole ladies and discover what makes them unique. In this video, we explore facts about Banyankole ladies shedding light on their traditions, achievements, and challenges and contributions. To understand Banyankole ladies later, it's essential to exploit their historical background. The Banyankole people are believed to have migrated from the present-day Ethiopia, settling in the Ankole region of Uganda. The Banyankole are located in the southwestern Uganda. At the turn of 19th century, they numbered about 400,000 people. This former kingdom is well known for its long-horned cattle, which were objects of economic significance. The Mugabe or the king was an astute ruler. He claimed all the cattle throughout the country as his own. Chiefs were ranked not by the land that they owned but by the number of cattle that they possessed. Banyankoli society is divided to high ranked castes, social class of personalists, nomadic herders, and a lower ranked caste of farmers. The Bahimas are cattle herders, and the Bairu are farmers who also care of goats and sheep. In 1967, the government of Bertrand Obote, Prime Minister of Uganda, abolished kingdoms in Uganda, including Kingdom of Akole. This policy was intended to promote individualism and socialism in opposition to traditional social classes. Nevertheless, cattle are still highly valued among the Banyankole. The Bahima are still held in high regard. Bankole lies in the southwest of Lake Victoria in southwestern Uganda. Sometime during or before the 17th century, cattle keeping people migrated from the north into central and western Uganda and mingled with the indigenous farming peoples. They adopted the language of the farmers but maintained their separate identity and authority. Most notably, in the kingdom of Ankole, their country was well suited for pastoralist nomadic herding. Its rolling plains were crowned with the banyan grass. Banyankole religion today are Christian. Majority of the Banyankole are Christians. They belong to major world denominations, including Catholic Church or the Church of Uganda, which is Anglican. Fundamental Christianity, such as evangelism, is also common. The element of indigenous Kinyankole religion that survives most directly today is the belief in the ancestral spirits. They still believed that many illnesses result from neglect of dead relatives, especially paternal relatives. Through divination, it is determined which ancestor has been neglected. Presence of meats or milk or changes in behavior can appease the ancestor's spirit. Social relations among the Banyakoli cannot be understood apart from the ranks in the wider society. The Mugabe king and the chiefs had authority over herders, the Bahima. The Bahima had authority over the Bairu farmers. Within the family, husbands and authority over wives and older children had authority over younger ones. Inheritance and typical involvement, the eldest son of man's first wife who succeeded to his office and property. Relations between fathers and sons and between brothers were formal and often strained. Mothers and their children and brothers and their sisters were often close. The beauty standards and body image. The Banyankole ladies embrace their unique beauty standards, they celebrate their natural features and believe in enhancing their inner radiance. Curvy women are held in high regard. The Banyankole ladies play a vital role in the communities. They actively engage in the communal activities and contribute to the social and economic developments of their villages. Banyankole ladies are known for their strong work ethic and their involvement in agricultural practices which form the backbone of the society. Rituals and ceremonies hold immense cultural value for the cultural ladies from births, celebrations, initiations, ceremonies and harvest festivals. This event provides an opportunity for Banyankole ladies to showcase their talents, share stories and celebrate their rich heritage. The 
presentation of Panyanku ladies in media and literature plays a crucial role in shaping public perception. Increased visibility provides platform for their stories to be told and their voices to be heard. They are actively involved in sharing their experiences and perspective, promoting the understanding and appreciation of their culture. Banyakole ladies in the workforce have made significant strides. They have excelled in various fields, including business, healthcare, education, and politics. Their determination, resilience, and commitment to their chosen professions have shattered glass ceilings and inspired future generations of Banyakolis to pursue their career aspirations. Banyakole women have this sense of fashion and style. They blend traditional and modern elements to create a unique and elegant outfit from vibrant hot prints to intricately woven fabrics. Banyakole ladies show their creativity and fashion sense through their attire. They use the fashion as a form of self-expression and embracing both cultural heritage and contemporary trends and were integral in maintaining the cultural fabric of their community. The traditional clothing and adornments, the Banyakule ladies are known for their vibrant and colorful dress at a gomesi, a traditional Ugandan dress adorned with beautiful patterns and colors. The gomesi is accessorized with various jewelry pieces such as necklaces, bracelets and earrings showcasing their appreciation for aesthetics. The gomesi is symbolizing cultural identity and elegance. It holds a deep cultural and historical significance. Contribution to the arts and entertainment. Banyakule ladies have made noteworthy contributions to the arts and entertainment industry. They have showcased their talents in music, dance, drama, and storytelling, preserving cultural traditions through artistic expressions. Many Banyakule ladies have achieved recognition at national and international levels, adding to the vibrant tapestry of Ugandan arts and culture. Throughout history, Banyakule ladies have emerged as influential figures in various fields, from political leaders and activists to entrepreneurs and artists. These remarkable individuals have left an indelible mark on society. Their achievements inspire others to reach for their dreams and challenge societal norms. Banyakule ladies have actively participated in the political landscape of Uganda. They have held positions of power and influence, advocating for their rights and well-being of their communities. Their presence in politics ensures that diverse voices are represented and that decisions are made with the best interests of all citizens in mind. Before the abolishment of the kingdom, they had a unique marriage rites. Like many African rites, there were rituals people underwent. Once a girl turned eight or nine, her aunt prepared her for marriage, teaching her a lady-like behaviors. She was well placed on a fattening diet or beef, millet, and milk because the people see a slim person as an attractive. She was also taught to avoid sexual relations before marriage, often threatened by death and ostracization from the society. Once a girl becomes marriageable age, the groom to present two to ten cows, goats, and a beer. One of the customary practices to initiate her into the culture done after ten days. Due to the high regard for virginity and abstinence from sexual activities before marriage, the bride is presumed to lack the knowledge of pleasing her husband. It was therefore the duty of the aunt to test her groom's sexual ability by sleeping with him. Yes, you had me right, before she tests the girl's virginity. This is her wedding gift to the bride. It was there for the auntie, her groom's sexual ability by sleeping with him. The Banyankole people have a long and storied history dating back centuries. Banyankole ladies have played a significant role in preserving and passing down their cultural practices from generation to generation. Over time, the society developed distinct social structures. 
the behemoths affront the fat brides at the idle choice. Men measure a woman and woman's attractiveness by her obesity. Literally, a plus size woman is highly valued and a young woman is prepared for marriage in ways guaranteed to fatten her up. The least possible activity and the most possible is through feeding, constant feeding. By the time of her marriage, the young woman may also be fat so that she cannot walk, she can only waddle at the wedding. On Lucas, comment on how beautiful she is, noting with approval the cracks in her skin caused by the fatness and the difficulty with which she walks. Once a married wife, she kept fat by consuming surplus milk from the cowhead, often coerced to do so by her husband, long past her point of satisfaction. A young woman weighing 65 kg at the time of her identification for marriage can be fattened to as heavy 160 kg in only three months. By the time they're through with her, she will be too fat to the extent that she can hardly walk. Stay tuned guys, catch up with my next video on the most fascinating tribes in Africa.